Okay, welcome to note set number five. And uh, now we're going to start getting into some stuff that should be brand new. Uh, and uh, in section 2.5 of Proacus and Monolacus, uh, still talking about difference equations, but now we're going to be getting into implementation, and in particular, block diagrams. Um, so when we talk about implementation, we're just really talking about not like writing code or specific hardware, but how do we think about the internal structure <clears throat> once uh, in terms of block diagrams. And once we have that block diagram, that's what we would use to actually guide us in writing code and or um, developing some hardware for the, for the system. So let's uh, take a look. And uh, this is what we've seen before. Uh, this was a simple FIR filter, and we used these Z inverses, um, uh, drawing from our knowledge of Z transform, where Z, the multiplying the transform by uh, Z inverse gives uh, a, a corresponding delay in the in the time domain. So um, each of these little boxes we we view as um, a unit delay or equivalently a, a storage location where we store a previous value. Um, so from, a, from a, a math point of view we view it as a unit delay and from a hardware or software point of view we view it as we've stored the previous value, uh, the previous sample value. Uh, and so we've already seen uh, how this implements a, a simple FIR filter with impulse response H0 H1, H2, H3, and so on, out to Hm minus 1. And uh, now we want to look at uh, a more general version of this. So, um, let's start with the first order uh, recursive system that we saw before, although we have a little bit more structure here. Um, the uh, equation at the top here we see in the, in the red box, uh, we have uh, two uh, input terms. In the previous uh, slides, we had, I think, just a single input term there. Um, so um, this is just a little bit more, um, a little bit more general than we had before, but not that much more. Um, but it, it allows us to, to see a little bit more structure than we would if we just had a single input term there. So um, we can see that uh, the red part uh, I've got uh, boxed in with some uh, red uh, box in, uh, on the equation, and I'm showing a red box on a block diagram uh, uh, that corresponds to that. So we can see that we, we take x of n, we have a, a, a z inverse term uh, box here, which gives us our x of n minus 1. Uh, so now we've got uh, those two terms, x of n and x of n minus 1. And so x of n gets multiplied by a b0, x of n minus 1 gets multiplied by b1, and then we add those together, and so there's our, our summation. And so uh, the term that falls inside this red box we'll call v of n. So we have an inter intermediate result at this point. Let me get rid of all that stuff there, uh, clear things off. Uh, okay, so now let's look at uh, the other part. Um, we've got uh, v of n coming in uh, that gets added to um, minus a1 or negative a1 times y of n minus 1. So let's just hypothesize that we've got a y of n there at the output. I mean, that is the thing that we're trying to create. And so uh, we run that through a, a delay box, unit delay box, and we get our y of n minus 1. And uh, so that's nice. Uh, and then, so to, to create what's on the right-hand side here, we take our V of N, which is inside the, the, the red dashed box, and we add to it uh, minus A1 times Y of N minus 1. And so we add that together. And when we add those together, what does it become? It becomes Y of N. So it, it, it ends up right there. So... Uh, let me get rid of that and clear things off a little bit there. Um, so it's pretty easy to verify that this form uh, does, this form of block diagram does satisfy this uh, 
first order difference equation that we have. And this kind of structure where we have uh, something at the front that implements the input side of the difference equation and then something at the at the end over here that implements the um, the uh, essentially the the structure of the uh, output side of the difference equation uh, we call that direct form one and to be honest direct form one is really uh, not terribly useful uh, other than the fact that it's it's really the most obvious way of writing out the the difference equation but for us it's a stepping stone to uh, where we really want to go, which we'll call direct form two. Um, and so direct form two basically arises by playing a little trick. Um, you can see that we end up with two different delays here. Uh, and we'll see that direct form two actually allows us to uh, get double duty out of a single delay. Uh, and then we'll expand that uh, or generalize that to see um, how we can do this um, for a more general difference equation. And, and the reason that we want to do this is remember that every one of these z inverse boxes corresponds to a memory location. So uh, right now as we show it here we would need two memory locations and once we convert this into the so-called direct form 2 we'll see that we will only need one memory location and so uh, it would reduce the memory requirements uh, uh, we would need whether we're doing this in hardware or, or software. So let's, let's move to the next slide here. Uh, and we're going to go through a progression that will take us from direct form 1, which we have up at the top, uh, through an intermediate form in the middle, down to direct form 2, which is where we want to be. Um, so we start up at the top. All I've done is... Um, redrawn, well, I'm using from the book, uh, I'm re-showing uh, what we had for direct form 1 for the previous, uh, from the previous slide. Then we use a, a result that says uh, for LTI systems we can interchange their order without changing the overall result. So we can view this as one system cascaded into a second system. And so we can interchange those uh, and when we do that um, let me get rid of some of that um, so that we can more easily see this. Uh, okay, sorry, I had a little uh, interruption there. My dog was barking. Um, I don't remember exactly where I was, but I think that I was just saying that uh, what we can do is interchange their order. And so when we interchange those, uh, we, now, uh, we now hear... Uh, have um, we've we've got the first part here, and we've got the second. Uh, well, what was the second part is now the first part. What was the first part is now the second part. Um, so that's that's kind of the key. Um, but then here's here's the real trick. Notice that this is all the same. So the same thing goes into this delay as into this delay. Therefore. The same thing comes out of that delay. Um, and that really is the trick right here. And once we see that trick, um, we can then uh, take advantage of that in the following way. Um, since the same thing goes in and the same thing comes out, why do we need both of them? So we can replace the two of those by just one and uh, make this connection for B1 uh, and this connection for minus A1 uh, on, on just the single version of it rather than two independent ones. And that there is the key. Let me just get rid of all that um, drawing stuff uh, now that I have that. Um, so that's the key. And when we do that, we end up with this thing, which is direct form 2. And uh, now that we have... Uh, done that, we have just a single delay, which um, will save us uh, some hardware and or, um, well, mostly hardware. Um, now, the, um, an interesting thing is that uh, even though the difference equation is written in terms of delays of the input and various delays of the output, um, this delay here isn't really delaying either the input, nor is it 
delaying the output. It's delaying some intermediate result, which we've just labeled W of N here. Um, and so that's kind of an oddity of this. Um, but notice that we still retain uh, the, the coefficients that are directly in the, um, in the uh, difference equation. Uh, so that's largely why this structure is, is referred to as the direct form, because everything relies directly on things that are explicit in, uh, in the difference equation. Uh, and so that's kind of the, the beauty of this. Um, okay, so very simple example that illustrates that. Um, and this just this slide just shows how we can, now that we've seen this, um, go immediately to the structure that we need. Um, so we see that we have a, a, a B0 here and we have a B0 here, and there's no delay on that, so it, it's going to go from the top of this uh, delay box. Then we have a, a B1 and a negative A1, they're both on a, a, a first delay. Um, again, I know that those delays are showing up on X and Y individually, but nonetheless, the B1 and the A1 show up after one, you know tapping off the, the same single delay. Um, we showed that that was true, and uh, you know, once you see it, you just need to believe it and, and go with it. And so now we can do the same kind of thing. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do the development here for a general form. Notice that we, we've got dot, dot, dots here. Um, so we're, we're saying that we could have any number of, of elements um, on, on each side of this. So, um, so that's what uh, we're showing here. And, and basically I'm saying N... Uh, M and N don't have to be equal in this, so we could have a uh, different number of terms in each of these sums. Uh, uh, but nonetheless, we'll still be able to fuse all of this together. So here's our direct form 1, uh, and you can see that we need uh, N delays over here, and we need M delays over here, so we need a total of N plus M uh, delays, and, and that's, that's kind of wasteful. We'll see on the slide that we can play the same game. We interchange them, recognize that once we've interchanged them, we've got two parallel structures that are basically identical, and so why use both of them? We can just have one of them and tap off. And then here's the, here's the trick. Um, if one side or the other is shorter than, um, uh, than the other side, uh, you just tap down as far as you need uh, and, and don't tap any farther. So in this case, we're, we're showing uh, the, the scenario where um, M is smaller than N, and in, in particular, we're saying that M is just two less than, than N. So we don't need any taps off these last two boxes. Um, but the big thing, the really um, amazing thing here is that it's so easy to just look at this difference equation and write down by inspection what the block diagram needs to be. Um, so we've got all the A uh, coefficients and they are all operating as feedback coefficients with direct numbers and you know the negative sign is coming from that negative out in front um, and then we have the b uh, coefficients again going right down uh, the, the, the structure uh, so it's very very easy to see how to do this and you should be able to given uh, a difference equation immediately write it in direct form too and vice versa, given a direct form to block diagram to be able to immediately write uh, the difference equation for that. Um, so that's, that's the, the, the cool thing about that. Okay, uh, so given this idea, let's talk a little bit about recursive versus non-recursive. And so if we look at our difference equation up at the top, again, I've got it identified two different parts. Uh, the blue... Uh, dashed part, or I guess the blue dotted part, 
is is the non-recursive part. That's the part that's taking the input and it's and it's it's the current input and past input samples, uh, and and creating part of the output. And then inside the red dash dot box is the recursive part. That's where past outputs are being fed back. And you can see that I've identified the structures on the block diagram uh, that's in direct form 2. Uh, and so it's very easy to see that it's the A sub K coefficients that uh, you know, feed back uh, the, the past outputs, even though we're not explicitly creating those past outputs. Um, the structure is effectively doing that. Uh, and the B sub Ks, even though they don't uh, work directly on the actual inputs um, are also, uh, you know, basically doing the, the non-recursive part. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the structure of this. So we can immediately identify from the block diagram what part is recursive and what part is non-recursive. And so from that, we can then say, well, what if we have a purely recursive system? Now, um, you know, we obviously have to have one term that counts for the input, um, but everything else um, comes uh, uh, recursively here. There's no, you know, feed forward of, of past input samples. Um, and so we can just wipe out all of the structure over here that is there to handle the, the, the non-recursive part. Uh, and then, so once we do that, what we're left with uh, is, is shown here. And um, the only thing that we can uh, maybe do that might make things a little bit uh, more obvious is we can take this B0 and move it to the, um, to the front and, and put it multiplying X directly so that we can see that structure. Uh, and once we do that, then the, the, the thing that's labeled W of N here actually literally becomes Y of N. And then we can really see that this is actually, um, you know, this would be Y of N, this would be Y of N minus 1, and, and, and so on. Um, so very easy to write out what the purely recursive version looks like. Uh, and also very easy to write out what the purely non-recursive version version looks like. So now, uh, you know, the, the part that would normally be in there um, that uh, feeds back outputs is, is missing, and all we have is just the, um, the non-recursive part. And again, we can just wipe out all of the stuff that would be here feeding back. So that's all wiped out, and, and so we end up with this kind of structure, very easy to see. Um, and now we really can see that, you know, X of N is going into this uh, string of delays. So we really do get X of N minus 1, X of N minus 2, and, and, and so on. And, uh, and it, works, it works perfectly, just as we are expecting it to work. Um, so uh, on this slide, I, I want to point out that uh, you need to be a little bit careful a lot of people talk about FIR filters as, as um, you know, being, uh, you know, non-recursive. And in general, we think about them that way, and we can implement them that way. But there are times when an FIR filter can actually be implemented with recursion. Um, and uh, sometimes there's, there's a, a reason for doing that and, and an advantage to doing that. So I just simply want to illustrate, here's a, a, an example that could be uh, implemented as a non-recursive filter, certainly as an FIR filter. Um, uh, you can verify that by finding the impulse response of this thing. Um, and, uh, you know, we could implement it in this non-recursive form. Very, very straightforward, just exactly like what we just saw. Um, but we could also rewrite this. So, uh, you know, playing a game similar to something we did earlier, we can uh, rewrite this this way, and you can verify that uh, algebraically this is correct. Uh, and then we can just recognize that this part here is actually just uh, y of n minus 1. And so we can rewrite that there. And so we end up now getting a recursive structure for this. 
Um, and so now we could implement this system either in a non-recursive form or in a recursive form. And one of the big things I'm trying to point out here is that even though this is recursive, it is FIR, finite duration impulse response system. Um, so uh, this would be the structure for implementing this thing in a recursive form. We have this non-recursive form first, followed by a recursive structure after that. Um, and so this, this non-recursive part is just creating... Uh, you know, all, this string of, of delays is just creating this, this big delayed version of X, which then gets subtracted uh, from, from the, the current X. Then once we have that, it gets added in with a, a recursive part coming back. Um, so just kind of summarizing what we're seeing here, um, we're seeing that we have to be careful about uh, throwing around the terms FIR, IIR, and recursive and non-recursive. So FIR and IIR are describing a fundamental characteristic of the system's impulse response. It has nothing to do per se with how the system is implemented. Recursive and non-recursive uh, describe more of the structure of the block diagram used to actually implement the system. Um, so certainly, if you do have something that is um, implementable as a non-recursive system, uh, and you can verify this, draw direct form 2 for the non-recursive part only, and you can show that it has to have a finite duration impulse response. Therefore, non-recursive implementation implies finite duration impulse response. However, if you have a recursive implementation, um, more often than not, it is IIR, but there are some cases where you have a recursive implementation that ends up being FIR. So you kind of have to watch that um, terminology, and I, I'll admit there are times when, when I, I am a little bit loose with this um, uh, and will say, well, it's IIR, so... Um, uh, or, uh, you know, it, it's recursive, therefore it must be IIR. Um, that's not always exactly true. And let's finish off this set of notes, revisiting our discrete time system relationship block diagram. This is not a system block diagram. This is our, our concept block diagram. And, uh, you know, I've, I've darkened in these two blocks here because that's what we've been talking about. Uh, and these are new ideas that you haven't seen in the previous course, um, a connection between the difference equation and the block diagram. And so now you should be able to go back and forth by inspection from a direct two-form block diagram to a difference equation um, or vice versa. Uh, and so we'll finish off here, uh, and I'll see you next time.